Hello and welcome to Bread of Life, a daily devotional program which each week features a different area pastor. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Dan Wolf of Vernon. Greetings, brothers and sisters. We continue today in our study of reconciliation from the letter to Philemon. Onesimus, the subject of the letter, defrauded his master Philemon, ran away to Rome, but in God's sovereignty was brought to salvation. And so Paul now writes this letter to Philemon to receive Onesimus not as a runaway slave returned, but rather as a brother in Christ. Onesimus needed to be reconciled to Philemon, so this letter is intensely practical. It gives us important application of the gospel lived out in real life, in real situations of forgiveness and reconciliation between believers because of their bond in Christ. What is reconciliation? Biblical reconciliation is the process of two previously alienated parties coming to peace with each other. And so in verses 4 to 7, Paul prays as a model for us to pray for reconciliation. And there's two aspects to this prayer. There's his gratitude. Paul says in verse 4, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers. And isn't This is not just some customary thing that Paul does at the beginning of letters. Nothing that Paul does is incidental. Rather, everything he says is intentional. He's not just talking the talk. He's actually walking the walk. He said, for instance, in 1 Thessalonians, that in everything we are to give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And this is exactly what he was living out. The direction of his thankfulness is noted, I thank my God. This language of my God is deeply personal language that speaks to his relationship with God. And this is the kind of relationship, by the way, that all of us should be striving toward, but it doesn't happen by accident. Our walk with God is intentional, and what's interesting is that when our relationship with the Lord is not what it ought to be, how often our relationships with others are not what they ought to be. But a relationship with God, as Paul describes, is what is truly fulfilling and produces a heart filled with thankfulness. He says, always, I'm praying for you always. And this is wonderful because he's saying, Philemon, every time I go to the throne of grace, I remember you in my prayers. This is beautiful language. Why does he pray this way? Well, because, verse 5, I hear of your love and of your faith that you have toward the Lord Jesus, and all the saints. The emphasis is that Philemon's faith is tangible. It looked like something, but so also his love was evident. So would others who look at our lives and know about our faith in Jesus, would would our faith and our love toward Jesus and the saints be something that someone else could report positively about? Paul's gratitude leads naturally to his joy. Paul, in a sense, ends the paragraph in verse 7 with more thankfulness. He says, For I have derived much joy and comfort from your love, my brother, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you. Your love, Philemon, has given me such joy and comfort. It fills my heart. Refresh the saints is a military term. As the as a military group was marching in battle, they're exhausted, they're tired, and so they take a, a break and they're refreshed. They get a drink and they're back on the trail. It's that kind of refresh. Philemon, your life is like an oasis of love and joy so that when people leave you, they feel refreshed. Brothers and sisters, don't you want to be like that? When some people come away from us, do they feel sucked dry, discouraged, and criticized, or do they feel the refreshment of Christ? This leads to Paul's petition in verse 6. He prays that the sharing of their faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. He's not speaking about evangelism, but he's speaking about koinonia, fellowship. He's praying that there would be a mutual participation in their faith, so that working together, God would repair their relationships. How does this happen? By praying for it. You need to be thankful to God for the person that you're at odds with. And this is not natural. This is supernatural. So we need to see others the way that God sees them and pray that God would produce this in us. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be those who pray for your help in our conflicts, pray for those that we're in conflict with, and I pray that you would give us the grace to pursue reconciliation in Jesus' name. Amen. 
You've been listening to Pastor Dan Wolf of Vernon, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.